What's up you guys? Today's video is going to be very difficult for me. If you have been following me on social media, you know that my friend Michael Schimmelhorn, who was 31 years old, was killed in the Department of Corrections yesterday at a Washington facility in New York State. He was on parole out of Otsego County, and man, so many people failed in the situation, and I'm, I'm going to break everything down for you guys. Before we get into it, I just want to let everyone know this is irrelevant, but these videos that you're about to see from me are filmed out of order. The next video that I have coming out for you is why I left YouTube in the first place. It's a very different video than the video that you're seeing today. And then there's some cooking videos and some more lighthearted videos. They were filmed a couple of weeks ago, um, so I just want to tell you guys that. So if it looks like um, I'm happy and smiling on YouTube, please know that that's not in real time and I am very distraught and devastated and upset and I'm going through a lot because I am in mourning because my friend is gone. Um, so I just wanted to share that and I want you guys to understand that these videos are not filmed in order at all. Um, I'm filming this Thursday, I'm putting it up on Friday, I'm trying to get this video out as fast as I can so all the other content that I have is just put to the back burner because this is more important. To everyone that shared my TikTok video yesterday or the day before of Mikey's death, thank you. Thank you all for messaging me and sending me your condolences. Thank you for donating to the GoFundMe for his funeral expenses. And I will leave that in the description box and the comment section as well. Thank you just for your kind words and for sharing his story and getting his story out. It's so important that the prison and the people that murdered him are held responsible. And we're gonna get into all of that today. Prison reform is so important because people are dying. And when it's your own friend, it's even harder. This is not the first friend of mine that I've had hurt in prison, but this is the first friend of mine that's been murdered in prison. Uh, my ex has been beaten by COs in New York State Prison many times over. My friend Matt Granin was used as a battering ram and they broke his neck and they left him in a cell and he's in pain for the rest of his life because of it. And I filmed a video with him and I'll link that down below too if you wanna check that out after this. The New York Department of Corrections just continues to get away with this and it's so hard. It's so hard because you're just helpless and there's nothing you can do by yourself. But as a community, as a whole, we can get the story out there and we can change how they treat inmates in New York State and hopefully around the world. That is always my goal to help, to help change things in prisons because these are people's lives. And yes, Mikey broke the law. He made a mistake because of his substance use disorder. And we're gonna get into all of that, but these are still human beings and it's not okay for guards to sexually assault them, beat them, murder them, neglect them. It's not okay. And it begs the question, who are the real criminals? And yes, I know there are good CEOs out there, but we have to get the bad ones out so the good ones can do their job. So I'm gonna try to get through this video the best that I can. I'm going to try to tell you guys what happened the best that I can. If it seems rambly, I apologize. Um, I haven't gotten much sleep and my mind is just racing right now, as you can imagine. I'm absolutely devastated. Jen Cutting was also friends with him. She's devastated. His entire family is devastated and mourning. Mikey was a really good guy. He was a sweetheart. He just unfortunately made a few mistakes. So... Let's start off with why he was in prison, because I know you guys want to know. He was in prison on a manufacturing charge. I'm not sure he did it. I'm not sure that he did it. Part of me thinks that he just didn't snitch and he was just at that house at the time that the cops kicked the door in, but I don't know. That's just a guess. Because when he and I talked about that charge, he didn't tell me that. He didn't tell me that he didn't do it and he was just holding it down meaning not snitching. He didn't tell me that. I just said, man, what you doing? Don't make meth. And he kind of just winked at me and like brushed it off. You know, he didn't tell me what happened um, when he was sentenced in 2018. So, um, but that was just the kind of person that he was, you know, like, like me, he was a little closed off about things like that. So he didn't get into the case with me, um, but I was just like, boy, you better stop. But two years is nothing, you got this, you can do two. Um, I'll see you in 2020. I've had to just stop talking and just catch my breath for a second. Um, I'm just so grateful for editing. Not that that matters. Um, so in 2020, he was released on parole but post-release supervision, um, it's a little more strict. 
New York parole is very difficult. They've denied jobs to my friends. They've been really hard. I myself was on some form of paper from 13 to 28. It is hard, especially when you don't have the means or the resources financially, emotionally, to get your life on track. And although he did have, you know, a family and friends, it was still very difficult for him, you know? They don't have the financial means to help him the way that I know that his family wanted to, um, just like my family, you know? I was released to a halfway house and I didn't have any resources and it was very difficult, right? That is so often the case. Mikey and I are from a very poor area. We're from the same town, you know? It's, it's really poor and everyone there struggles. Everyone is just kind of, just trying to make ends meet, you know? Um, but once, once he was a felon, it was very difficult for him to find a job. I believe he was living in a motel in 2020 and um, that leads to his parole violation. I have heard mixed things on why he violated his parole, but let me just tell you, it is extremely easy to violate parole in New York State. It is easy. They have changed things with parole where they can no longer put you in for technical violations. Um, so they did pin some other charges on him, but essentially, he was in prison on a parole violation. He was transferred to Washington facility in New York. I don't think he had even been there for that long. Um, and one day he was jumped by six other inmates. They beat him so badly that his jaw was all busted up. He had a lot of internal bleeding and he was ur urinating blood. So some things that need to happen once you are jumped in prison, if there's any kind of altercation. First and foremost, if you're in a fight, usually all of the inmates are cuffed up, written up, and taken to SAG. The sergeant is made aware that there was a fight in unit, whatever, and these are the inmates and they're in segregation. Once they're in SAG, they have to be looked at by medical staff. Now this was done, they did check the boxes. Medical staff looked at Mikey and said, hmm, looks like your jaw's a little busted up. Take some ibuprofen, go back to SAG, you're gonna be fine. He tried to tell them, I am not okay, something's wrong. He was able to make a phone call to his family and that's how we know this information. He was taken back to SAG and he was, he was begging for medical treatment. He was begging them, he was banging on the door and begging for help and unfortunately, Within 24 hours, he died because of his injuries. He died alone in a segregation cell by himself, scared, begging for his life and begging for help. So the sergeant needs to be held responsible. The guards on duty need to be held responsible. The medical staff that neglected to treat his injuries or sent him to the hospital also need to be held responsible. And the six inmates that murdered him need to be held responsible for his death. That's what we're up against right now. The information that I was given was the prison was ignoring the funeral home's calls. The funeral home was trying to call to get Mikey's body released so they could do an independent autopsy and so that Mikey could, you know, have a funeral. I believe that we are going to be able to have a funeral for him. I believe that they are going to release his body. The reason why he needs an independent autopsy is super sketch. And I was unable to find anything online about this. Um, but essentially, without going into too much detail, prisons have been known to cover up murders um, and negligence and all kinds of things. And if the family does not have resources or a voice, financial means, it's very hard to fight the prison. So what we need now is a lawyer to take on the lawsuit pro bono. It's negligent homicide. The prison failed to treat him for his injuries and he died because of that. They also fa failed to keep him safe. You know, those six inmates that were beating him to death they failed to help him. If you were hearing a dog in the background, I have a new puppy and there's gonna be a puppy vlog. I told you all of these videos are just filmed so far out of order. Um, back to Mikey, so we need a lawsuit. Uh, right now we are going to start a petition. Hopefully by the time you see this video, a petition will be created for him so that you guys can go sign the petition just to hold New York State responsible for his death. That's what we need to do. Whatever it takes to make sure that prisons no longer get away with this, that's what we need to do. And everyone that was part of his death and the negligence surrounding his death needs to be held responsible. And that is going to be our biggest challenge. So um, we have created a GoFundMe. The money goes directly to Lander's Funeral Home in Sydney, New York. You can also send flowers to the funeral home for Mikey um, if you want to. And I'm so sorry you guys never got to meet him. 
So there is a GoFundMe for his funeral expenses. Again, he's 31 years old and the family does not have the means to give him a proper funeral. Um, we are gonna start a petition and we are working on getting him a lawyer that will take on this case pro bono. This is really heavy and it's really hard. And um, you know, Mikey did not deserve to go out like this. He was such a sweetheart and he was so kind and I know he made mistakes, but he was a really good guy. He'd give you the shirt off his back if you asked him for it. I hear these stories all the time. People message me and tell me their loved ones have died and their friends have died and you just think, and you just never think it's gonna be you, you know? And then when it is, it like, it really hits. I grew up with him. I grew up with him and his family and it's just, it's really hard to get through the day. Like I, I'm okay and then I start talking about it and I'm just a mess. Um, I think the only thing that's gonna keep me and his family and Jen going is fighting for him, fighting for justice. And um, I wanna promise his family right now that I will not let his death be in vain and I will fight as long as it takes to get justice for him and to change these policies in New York State and to hold these officers accountable they let the wrong person die. They watched the wrong one die, I can promise you that. And I'm gonna fight for him until my last breath. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do wanna keep it short so more people will watch. Um, thank you for your love and support and your kindness and your condolences and sharing the videos. It just means so much to us. It means so much to us that you guys are in our corner and you're just sending love and positivity you know, his family needs to be surrounded with love right now. I'm gonna try to make it back to New York for his funeral. Um, if I can't, then I can't, but I'm gonna try. And um, I just, from the bottom of my heart, wanna thank each and every one of you for being here and being so supportive. I know I keep saying that over and over, it just means everything to us. I'm gonna end today's video here. I love you guys. Stay safe, stay sober, whatever that looks like to you. And let's fight for prison reform together for Mikey and for everyone else suffering in the Department of Corrections. I love you guys.